Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the Red Flood mod as the All Russian People's Crusade. A few things have happened, so allow me to bring you up to speed. Uh, there was a hot fix to the game. Uh, it broke our save, but it fixed a whole bunch of things. I believe it fixed the uh, not being able to assign more than two ministers. Hopefully that's been fixed. It also fixed up a whole bunch of other issues. So I replayed to where we were, roughly. We were in December of 1938. However, uh, everything isn't exactly as it was. As you can see... We've completely knocked out Siberia, basically, on our own. The Treaty of uh, Novo Nikolaev. Oh, yeah, Novo Nikolaevsk. So, uh, naturally, we're getting all of their territory because the Russian Empire nor the realm of uh, Belovodia helped out. And just in case you think, you know, Joshua Logan is cheating, Joshua Logan is not cheating here, is, you know, the battles that were fought. We lost 86,000 men. We inflicted some heavy casualties on them. Funnily enough, uh, actually, I'll explain how this happened. So, naturally, in the previous episodes, when uh, Zilta Rasil was collapsing, I read each of the collapse events. And because I read each of the collapse events, us getting to Radzevsky was actually delayed. Because, you know, obviously, letting the game run and reading an event is much slower than just, you know, clicking the uh, the option you want in an event as soon as it pops up. So because of that, we're, at, we're several weeks ahead of where we were. And because of that, we were able to conquer Bolderev and the... Uh, the, the Chinese faction, uh, before we went to, we before we got into a war with Gada. And uh, funnily enough, the Free Creatorium actually knocked out Green Ukraine. So we knocked out Gada quickly. We had like 15 divisions already at that stage. Then we knocked out the Free Creatorium, knocked out Zelda Rossiya, knocked out Priamar, all of that good stuff. So there were... T and then, um, funnily enough, uh, what's his face? Uh, Von Ungern Sternberg actually lost to the Oirat Confederate, or like the Altai Confederation, and then they became the Oirat Confederation, and then uh, Vlasov took over them, so funnily enough, we actually we were actually fighting Vlasov in Manchuria, or not Manchuria, sorry, in Mongolia, as well as in Badebo, and also, um, yeah, I'll just quickly finish showing off all of these. Oh, did they really only have, a, maybe that's a field marshal, not a general, by the way, also, I, I was talking with one of the Red Flood developers in the comment section about this, these these are our divisions exactly where they were when the war ended, like, and this is this is all that was required to knock out Vlasov. I'm fairly certain the man only had a core, like now he didn't have cores on Mongolia, so all the VPs we took there don't really count. But all we took, we didn't even take that. We took Verknoidinsk. Uh, we took Cheetah. We took these ones. Uh, and that was it. And that was literally all that was required to knock out Vlasov. Now, I know the Red Flood developer said that they don't want, you know, Russian reunification dragging on until, like, 1943 or whatever. But, I mean, come on, this is outrageous. I didn't even have to take Irkutsk in order to knock out Vlasov. His capital was in Yekaterinburg. Or, or, no, or maybe it was Novo Nikolaevsk. But either way, like, th this is too easy. This is way too easy. This is outrageous. This surrender limit needs to be... Uh, I don't know, maybe removed or something. It's just it's minus twenty percent. It feels like more, to be honest. It's just crazy. It's 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 outrageous. I mean, come on, like we didn't even take Irkutsk and we knocked them out. It's it's absolute insanity, at least in my own opinion. But anyway, we will assign our military factories. We will integrate the conquered territories, which is twenty nine million people. We won't get cores and all of that, will we? Yeah, two point one nine, probably in Mongolia somewhere. I'm assuming. Yeah. Or probably maybe just Mongolia. Yeah, just Mongolia itself. That's fine. Now, we desperately need more artillery. As well as more infantry equipment. We started to run into a deficit, unfortunately. I Will I uh, expand? I want to expand my divisions. But I don't know if I have the uh, equipment to do so. Well, I, I definitely don't have the equipment to do so. But I suppose what I really mean is do I, uh, do I have enough time to get the necessary equipment? How much? Yeah, this is like... Oh, that's actually not too bad. Wow. Hmm. Maybe I will do it, so... Yeah, I think I will. Nice. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll be getting more factories as well once we start rolling. Now, we are here with uh, all of our advisors. So, Head of Military Intelligence, Victor Larianov, Efficient Sociopath. Resource Gain Efficiency, plus 20%. Recruitable Population Factor, minus 2%. Construction Speed, plus 5%. Ministry of the Interior, or Minister of the Interior, Alexander Bolotov, Leader of the People. Stability plus 5%, Route Out Resistance Mission Effects plus 10%. Economy Minister Mikhail Makovsky, Planned Economy Proponent. Uh, resource Gain Efficiency plus 3%, Construction Speed plus 5%. Production Efficiency Cap minus 2%, uh, Factory Output plus 2% as well. 
Foreign Minister, Nikolai Petlin, Ideological Crusader. Improved Relations Opinion, minus 0.2. Same ideology, monthly opinion, plus 40%. And Head of Government, Konstantin Radzevsky, Naive Optimist. Daily Pistol Power Gain, minus 0.1. Military Factory Construction Speed, minus 5%. Civilian Factory Construction Speed, plus 15%. It's a shame that uh, two of these ministers are, are generals. I really don't want to have to duplicate the reference. But that also does mean that... Yeah, we literally can't assign it. We don't have any more generals. This is why we need Shekarev, Agaev, Tirson, Steklov. They need to be generals because this it's just not enough generals. Not enough. Uh, ooh, oof. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of factories. Very nice. Now, check. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of repairs. Do all of that, please. We have available planes. Also, we got uh, 23 planes from uh, from Gada, like uh, like in one of my test runs. I don't know why we didn't get that the first time. Or, or rather, uh, on camera, that is. Alright, that's fine. Lev Lasevsky. Infantry expert. Fantastic. Cotton's already level 4. Beautiful. Now, once all of that is done... We're going to get working. Yeah, to cancel that, to be honest. Once all of that is done, we need a fort line. Oh, we already have forts. Oh, beautiful. Oh, thank God. Oh, that is just perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Vlasov. Now, come here to the realm of Belavodia. It'll take us a little while to get there because we're so damn far away. They could very well be coming after us next, so let's go. I can't I deploy planes at the airbase. It's very weird. Also, sorry about not getting a video out for, like, four days. I was studying for my very last exam, which is now over. So college is finished for the year, and I'm back to work. That's what I'm talking about. Time to make some money. I love my job so much. It's on my doorstep. Great bosses. Great co-workers. Money's good. Our work is good. Oh, shit, we don't have Omsk. Oh, that's an issue. Why, why do they have Omsk? Why do they have Omsk? That's an issue. Do we even have a rail connection going east? Or west, rather? I don't think we do. We literally don't. Oh my god, that's, that, that's a problem. That is a problem. Uh, from there to there, and from there to there. Do b both of those immediately. We desperately need that. That shouldn't take... Yeah, five days. God damn it. I love how easy railways are to build. They are very easy to build, in fairness. Also very easy to repair. But also very easy to sabotage. You know, I'll also build one just from there to there as well. Do that, please. Here we are. Railway connection is up. Hopefully that will help supply issues. It didn't help it that much. Uh, how are we down here for railway connections in Mongolia? Eh, let's do that. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's alright. Do that. That's all fine. Everything here should be fine. Oh, there's a spy all the way up there, wow. Alright, just get working on that. And after that, get repairing. Get training. Yeah, no divisions in basic. Do we... Yeah, we don't have, we don't have the equipment to bring up more divisions. But it would be nice to fill out these divisions. So, let's call up another 15 that we can have 224 stacks because god knows we're going to need N not against the realm of uh, Belavodia we, we can probably handle Belavodia but uh the Russian Empire <sighs> no sir 
Yeah, we only have 353,000 men in the field. Also, uh, Drozdovsky is crowned Andre. Andre the... No, just Andre. Not Andre the First or something like that. Okay. Things are different around the world as well. Uh, Germany has a... <coughs> uh, Libsock progressive. Prussia didn't go with uh, Ludendorff's wife. It's uh, young. Oh. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. This, this is interesting. This does give us an opportunity here. Ooh. Or do we just take the opportunity to build up? Get ready to go into Bellavodia. Spurs Industry 3, that'll be big. Fantastic. Also, sorry if I uh, sound bunged up. I know I do. It's uh, hay fever season. It's going to be four long months of it. Not looking forward to it at all. Hey, wh where have my planes gone? Hey, you said I had planes to deploy. Now there's no planes. God damn it. Alright, everyone, very aggressive. Let's go. You guys, come over here. Do your thing there. You guys, that, that, that. Just literally every VP that you can see, just grab it. Let's just say Petro Pavel. I thought it was Petro Pavlovsk. Maybe it's different. I don't know. See, this, this is going to be fast. Oh, wow, you have Tilly and See, I should know because we have Yekaterinburg, which is Pavlovsk. Let's go. Let's go quickly.
This is going to be over quickly, isn't it? Wow, Russia's already taken Kazan. Who has most of the... Yeah, they have most of the uh, VPs. I've always felt like the Italian Regency of Carnaro just goes after like Italy so late for Italy to have any genuine impact on the uh, Second World War. What's it called this time? I know it's not Second Valkyrie. We haven't engaged them yet. This is hilarious. Oh, there they are. Not losing that area. It's embarrassing. Three mills. No, I hate when this happens. Stop doing that. Don't do that. Free civilian factory is fantastic. Are there units so goddamn good? <clears throat> oh, you can't tell me it's this is that bad. God damn, my voice is raspy. <coughs> like, this is nine infantry, three artillery. How bad can it be? This is, this is your standard infantry division. Okay, good. We got a level of doctrine. All from my battalion, soft tackles, 10%. Very much needed. Thank you. Oh, Turkestan is unified. There we go. Under the dreaded Anamkov. I thought they had a unification event. I saw it in the... Uh, I saw it when I was... Oh, shit. So... I will be taking all of this. Uh, ARC. Yeah, there we are. Ooh. I, I, wish that, I wish this province wasn't so big. I was kind of hoping to do like something like that. Kind of like maybe following this river. I'll have to see about that province. Eh. Definitely take that, obviously. This, this province is just like obviously I'm, they're not going to have this province but or is that again it would kind of be a nice straight line down is that a now yeah, that is a supply hub I just it's just unfortunate really This is a supply of, I imagine. Yeah. It's connected by... Is it connected by rail? I don't know. It doesn't even recognize it. It's weird. I think I'll keep it. Yeah. It'll give me more forts, for the love of God. Oh, oops. 
the only way we're going to win this is by bleeding them. Because they have an army at least twice, maybe three times the size of ours. It's not going to be pretty. If we even can win is actually, is actually a question that's up for debate. Now, integrate the conquered territories. No shortage of manpower, serious shortage of equipment. Did we lose divisions in that war? I hope not. I think we might have. God, I hope not. I don't know, maybe not. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we, yeah, we lost something. I just didn't see it. Oh yeah, that's right, the Caspian Sea is, is an actual sea in this mod. I love that, I love that. It always should be. Or rather, obviously it's a sea, but like you can actually deploy naval assets in it, is what I mean. Though it doesn't seem to like have different tiles, interestingly. Now, do we need to connect? Yeah, this isn't connected by rail. Do that. Oh, we actually have two divisions in some provinces. I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> Not proud, but happy. <sighs> Here we go. Oh, they don't even have uh, a division on every province. They actually are actually short some divisions. Gives us more time, which is fantastic. Yeah. I need as much time as we can get. Actually, why aren't I doing the... Uh, oh, do, we, do I have continuous focuses? Are continuous focuses a thing in Red Flood?
one million men. We were in July of 1940. They are fully trained up to the regular level, giving us that extra 25% bonus. Yeah, extra 25%. We actually haven't brought in engineers or uh, reconnaissance, which I probably should, but I've already clicked the button, so it's, we're only one day away. Romania has unified. It was uh, Wallachia that beat Moldova. Also, uh, Kodriano never popped up in Moldova either. They never rose up. Um, but we do have a national conservative uh, guy who was describing an event as being corporatist, nationalist. Yeah, then you can read that if you want. And they just beat uh, the Socialist Republic of Moldova, or uh, of uh, Trans uh, Transylvania. And so now we have the United Kingdom of Romania, though they, are, they still aren't quite, you know, uh, there yet. Because primarily in terms of these two provinces, but also I suppose if you want to count that province as well, Prindestorvia. Uh, also, France is getting its shit kicked in by Germany. Just funny. Who's that? Oh. Wait, what? Oh yes, of course, of course. That that's a few minutes. And they're they're getting beaten by the uh, United Balkan Public Controllist Republics. Yes, indeed. That is fine. Also, America collapsed somehow. I don't, I don't really know what what's going on in America in, uh, in Red Flood. I don't really care either, to be honest. Now. All right, there we are. How many men do they have? Probably like a million? No, not quite a million. Let's see if they attack us first. Okay, they did. Seems like it's us who will be going on the attack, especially seeing how they only have one division on each province. Ooh, that's a green bubble, you know, I love to see that. Some are changing to red, that's fine. Some don't seem to be moving much at all. They seem to be holding. Oh, because they're doing... Yeah, they're doing that. That's fine. That's fine. You want to do that? That's, that's just fine. Fucking stupid. I hate last stand. I hate all of that stuff. Force attack last stand. I hate all that so much. And now they've gone off it again. So let's attack. they start doing it again, I'll just stop ta stop attacking until they... Yeah, they've done it again. It's just fine by me. I can keep pausing and unpausing. Do this all day. Till you run out of command power. So you're doing this for the entire front line, aren't you? Yes, you are. We also began the production of uh, support equipment as well as motorized trucks. <laughs> A.K.A. regular trucks. Oh, it's gone. Go. What's are you on very aggressive? Uh, I don't think you are, actually. There you are. Now you are. Range improvements. Fantastic. Proved small airframe. Oh, oh yeah, the the Birken Oath marches forth. So now Prussia is going after Germany. Yes, but, but they don't have a border with them. And it's a struggle for their very souls. Casualties. Oh, no, not bad actually. Quite good. How have we not yet taken over? Are they doing the funny... No, they're not. Okay. We're all good equipment. We are burning through it nicely, though. Come on, take Warmberg. That's an important place. It's a supply hub. It's got a railway running through it. If you guys could assist them, that'd be great. Yes. Good job. Yeah, we've broken across the Urals. Fantastic. Is Star Latamica uh, Spy Hub? No, Ufa is, though, I think. Yeah, it is. Not quite all the way across the Urals just yet. It's 
fine. Ah yes, repairs. Always important to do those. Not that, not that much, actually. No. Ooh, fantastic. We've broken across her very strongly here. Beautiful. Don't take Astrakhan. Part of the city supply hub. Advanced engines. Yes, we are focusing on tank research as well. Definitely going to need some of those. Uh, what should we get? More aircraft stuff, actually, yeah. <laughs> I said we were focusing on tanks. What should we get? Aircraft. Yeah. We need both. I think both would be great. Casualties. Acceptable. Very acceptable. They don't seem to have more manpower to reinforce these divisions either. Where the hell is your manpower, Russian Empire? Quite across the Urals yet again. Also, the fact that the Intermarium's content relies on a unified Russia is absolutely insane. This is literally the perfect opportunity for them to strike. Every war that we've been involved in so far has been the perfect opportunity for them to strike. They are getting some reinforcements, that much is clear, but... Ooh, leg infantry. Organizational ascent, that's huge. It's fantastic for us. Very surprised they didn't come for us first. They would have had us. Come on, drive back across the river. Uh, we are across the Urals in earnest. In all areas. Fantastic. Capitulation progress isn't outrageous either. That's good, that's good. Supplies. Fine. Advanced armor protection, that's good. Yes, sport companies, let's get these. We'll actually just improve what we already have. We don't have free civilian factories. Why is that there? Go away. Also, are you fully motorized? No, nope, you're not. God damn it. Infantry expert. Also, yes, I know I said that I wouldn't use them, but I'm using them. I, and I, I just really do not want generic generals. I hate them so much. Samara is ours. Seem to have serious issue breaking uh, west of the Urals around this area. Oops, no way.
Let's call up another. Actually, I think we're out of generals, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Except for Rok uh, Rokosovsky. Rodzevsky. We can use him as a general, even though he's a field marshal. So I'll call him another 24. Actually, call up, uh, yeah, 25. Because of that one division. Look, easy encirclement dub. Come on. Across the river and into Saratov. Fantastic. Saritsyn will be ours soon. We're gonna have to rename it, I don't know, Vozdograd or something. Sorry about that. Onwards we roll. Come on, let's take Zaritsyn. Cannons 2? Yeah, two years ahead of time. What, what else can we realistically guess? 1941 radar? Yeah. Both dedicated to support attack here. Maybe try to come around and go that way. Good Zaritsyn. Oh, attacking our flanks here. Oh, we're across the river in another area. Fantastic. There we go. That's it. That's the one. Oh, it's perfect. You did it anyway. Southern Russian in the Caucasus is going well, fantastic. We're all good in artillery? Wow, fantastic. More support equipment, so please. Capitulation progress? Yeah, you're getting there. Come on, up to the Don, let's go. Casualties. Good. Now, can we afford motorized recon uh, engineers and support artillery? Those engineers and recon could really help out. Don't have enough support equipment yet? Really? Wow. Damn, okay, keep going then. Keep pumping it out. Opera, what? Already? Oh my god, 100%, okay. You know, 100% didn't even have to take Kazan, didn't take Vyatka, didn't take Nizhny Novgorod, didn't take Baku, Ekaterinodar, Rostov, Sevastopol, Kharkov, Kursk, Moscow, Smolent. I mean, they have taken a lot of casualties, no doubt. They still have effective fo uh, fighting forces. I don't know about a capitulation this early, but either way, that's the game. Beautiful. Free military factories, yeah. I think just dump it into support equipment on one hand, and then tanks on the other. 
Will this game even last long enough? No, it won't. It won't last long enough for tanks. Not with what I have planned anyway. Just give me more support equipment. Doctrines, fantastic. Mobile defense. Just give me more convoys. Planes. Do I well do I actually have them this time? Because last time you told me I had them and I didn't have them. Oh, I get it. Maybe maybe they were fighters and they just reinforced that. No, but no, they would have done that quickly and I wouldn't have been able to see it. No, I'm not too sure. Uh, damn, that's a lot of aircraft. Fantastic. 746, not bad. Now, we need to quickly redeploy. Not even the stone area here. Oh, that's a pain in the ass. Ah, in our game previously, Russia had conquered them. That is a pain. And they're in the... Divine Legion. What? Oh, Kaprat for Tuska. Oh, my God. Well, that does help with the front lines, at least. The, the Belarusians are always a pain in the ass because they're always on the river. They always have uh, forts on them as well. All right, well, in that case, what, two to the north, two to the south? Maybe. Maybe three to the south once uh, Rodzewski's men come, on, uh, come online. Divine Legion, bro. What are you on? What are you smoking? And at least we got Finland as well. It was, it's nice to get Finland. Now, let's get on the border with Latvia. Now, oh, sorry about that. Off to all of these territories. Soon enough we'll be getting a notification that the Intermarium is coming for us. Because all of their content relies on a unified Russia. They don't do anything the whole game. You know, <laughs> like Germany's at war, you think, you know, Poland's like, you know, okay, that was a perfect time. Like, obviously before, you know, Germany started hammering France. But it's the perfect time to go in. Uh, they do have a claim on Oberschlesen. You know, that's the perfect time to get that. Maybe some, uh, you know, Oder Nice, Pomeranian territories. Maybe deal with Prussia, something like that. You know, I don't know, just anything. Just anything other than sit there. At the same time, they have been building up, which is good. So yeah, you uh, transform into an infantry division, please. Oh yes, I forgot to do our focus. Whoops. March of the Immortals. Gain base conflict support plus 30%. Gain base stability plus 30%. Gain one research slot. Move the capital to Moscow. The All-Russian People's Crusade will be known as the Russian Empire. Gets when the All-Russian People's Crusade triumphs. 25, centu uh, 25 centuries ago, uh, Xenophon took 10,000 men deep in hostile territory back home. These men fought through desert and snow after the emperor they had pledged allegiance to uh, died in war. With our own mere 10,000 men. Oh my god, no, no. We've already achieved the impossible. Yeah, 10,000 times uh, 100. Uh, for all of Russia, uh, the 10,000 and many more must march, and Rodzevsky shall write a legend worthy of succeeding that of the Anabasis itself. But not here, we won't rest till we water our horses in the Moskva, forwards men. Makes no sense that you can only do this focus once you've taken... Uh, oh, no, you need, you, if you have Ekaterinodar, Orenburg, and Petrograd, but, like, like how are you going to get to Petrograd and not have Moscow at the same time, you know, fucking loop up around, you know? It makes no sense. Well, you could do it, but why would you? Now, because we started in the east, we shall upgrade the infrastructure of the east first. As thanks for hosting us on our great journey west. That's the... Oh, watch my call it. That, that's the image I use for, for the new series trailer. What are the chances of that? Oh my god. 
Anyway, the All-Russian People's Crusade triumphs. Over the last two decades, Zelta Russia became the shelter for all those exiled from the Empire for their opposition to the regime. When the Russian Republic fell, their dreams, uh, their dreams seemed to come to an end as violence took over the Republican bastion. It was in this anarchy that the All-Russian People's Crusade, led by Konstantin Rodzevsky, took up to arms to restore order and end the Red Menace that has been plaguing Russia for decades now. Cutting through all those that opposed them, the Crusade unified the former Russian Republic and then set its sights on all those that stood against the unity and safety of the Russian nation, red or not. Now, after years of struggle, the lands once covered in brothers' blood are now growing grains and letting flowers bloom. Russia has won its place under the sun, safe from foreign and internal enemies. The unity of the church, nation and labour stands triumphant over the small hat reds, the republicans and the futurist demons that try to chip away Russia for their own taking. The future belongs to those with the will to take it and it has been by God's blessing that the Crusade and Konstantin Rodzevsky have had the power and resolve to win and save Russia in its darkest hour. Truly a blessed timeline. All the Reds dead, all the small hats, and all of our, all of our organizations gone. Futurists gone. Fucking faster, faster, faster accelerationists dead. Just nothing but autocracy, nationality, orthodoxy. Church, nation, and labor. Yeah, Rodzinski is definitely much more of a hero on this timeline than he is in the TNO timeline. Now, let us make sure that the music is all the way up fantastic now the bogatier is right again let me make sure the music is all the way up oh look at that there's armor of trucks now they changed okay oh my god it's the best song ever made blessed so i managed to use the same uh unification image in my new series trailer and the ex and the same song as the uh reunification super event pain upon pain suffering upon suffering agony upon agony wound upon wound in our bodies and in our souls fall after fall in this way shall we conquer cornelia zelia codriano the amount of codriano references in this uh in this path has been have been incredible glorious without end indeed like ooh, look at that new flag oh that's so much better Oh, that's beautiful. It's it's the upside down one as well, which I actually know, and I know what that means. The upside down, uh, say Imperial Russian flag. When I say Imperial Russian flag, I mean like you know the black, yellow, white, not the you know the the pan Slavic tricolor with the coat of arms. It's basically a thing used by monarchists to say that, uh, like, it's ah. Uh, let me get this right now. It's basically because Nikolai II was shot, and it's kind of a thing is like we're not finished mourning, and our mission isn't over until. Uh, you know, the Russian Empire is re-established. So they use that flag instead of, you know, the regular not upside down flag. I believe that's I believe that's what the upside down flag is. I don't uh, though I don't know why Rodzevsky has adopted it because, you know, we have we have re established the Russian Empire. Uh, or rather knocked out the old one, Drozdovsky's or yeah, you know, we've knocked out the old new one and now we're the new new one. Yeah. Research slot another research slot? The, never mind. Give me uh, anti here. So we'll integrate the Congo territories, of course. Attack the Baltic region. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Form the Mongolian Provisional Government. Let me uh, get the music back. So we'll do that. Mongolian Provisional Government under Mingzhu Zhingda. I don't know if he's generic or anything, but might be. Oh, Outer Mongolian Protectorate, Protectorate of Outer Mongolia. Oh, Boris Razukin. He's uh, he leads, or rather, he can lead uh, the is it Soyambo Revival Society in Kaiser Redux in Mongolia. It's always fun to see the overlap between these mods. Oh, did it actually do anything? No, it didn't. That sucks. Oh, there we go, Outer Mongolia. But that's not, nah, that's not, that's very much not Razukin. I know what Razukin looks like. And that's not the name Razukin either. Though you have the Pan Slavic Tricolor for some reason. This is very odd. 
Actually, you know what? Nah, fuck this. You know, we have Manchuria. We rusified that. We're just gonna rusify this as well. Yeah. And because now with the Zaradom of Turkestan has conquered Xinjiang, we can have like a big rush, a big rush in the east. Xinjiang, Mongolia, uh, Manchuria. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Free dockyards. Again, do not care, but I will take them anyway. Thank you. Wow, that is a lot of military factories. Have to import some steel, that's fine, we'll get it from the Japanese. Continue our partnership. Get this from the United States of Malaya. Wait, but why are our units still using the old flag? Oh, there we are. I think. Oh, it's it changed. It's yeah. It's changed when you zoom in, but not when you zoom out. Interesting. No. How many men do you actually? What the fuck? Ew. Okay, you don't actually have that many men. Perhaps one uh, army group should be enough to subdue you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, maybe two army groups. And again, I think we'll have to deal with the guys in the west first. Yeah, here we go. I'll storm over Ukraine. Ukraine and its allies are preparing for war against us, citing their territorial claims on the left bank of the Dnieper. The Intermarium is preparing to strike against us, given our weakened position due to our uh, so recent unification of our motherland. To victory! Ooh, we're actually recovering as well. Oh, do we have a bad national spirit? Oh, that is rough. The great reunification is sadly not the end of our woes. While on a map we might seem to be one, the truth is that uh, the divisions were and still are deeper than just lines on a map. We have to readjust training procedures, production, deal with our political enemies who will try to sabotage our regime with every step we take, and finally fully reunite Russia that our rule will stand against the, lawless against the lawlessness of the trouble. That is a rough national spirit. Especially in terms of the division organization. Hopefully it won't be enough to uh, set, uh, uh, be enough to set us back. Well, it will set us back, but hopefully it won't be enough to keep us down. I should say. Petliora is back. They called him Adamant Petliora, but he's not a Cossack. At least I don't think he is. Hope you're not coming after us. Why are you at war with all these people? Yeah, you're not in the Birkenide. Or Bur Birkenide, yeah. Ooh, they're losing. They're losing hard. Total rot from victory. Uh, Germany, or uh, Britain, Ari, aren't you supposed to be all about preventing a continental hegemon? This is exactly what a continental hegemon looks like. You're not, you're not doing a good job. Euphrates Union. What are you doing, Spain? Oh, is that is that them for us? No, that is Churchill, I believe. Yeah. There are the divisions. Like I said, I'm not going to create a new... Uh, create any generic generals. This doesn't mess up our front line right before the war begins. That would be a pain in the ass. 
How many men do you have, Belarus? Can I, can I cut through you and kind of break out into the depths? How many factories do you have? Or not factories, forts. You don't have any forts at all? Wow, okay. In that case, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, it's messing up the front line. Just redeploy quickly, quickly, quickly. Ooh, hurry up. Reorg, reorg quickly. Ah, damn it, why did they pull you all the way over there? That's fine. We won't be going to war with you, hopefully, anyway. Not immediately, that is. Metric radar, fantastic. ISR Air Force, get that as well. Air, yeah, uh, air supply, no air supply, that's fine. The hell of the. Thought we had a bunch of Punmar aircraft in, in that. I don't know the rest of. Oh, do the rest of you just have no weapons? The, the, air, the, the AI build aircraft without any weapons? Or did I just forget to assign them? Oh, yeah, I just forgot, forgot the present though. Never mind. <coughs> Why is it so heavily weighted in the south? Or is it? No, it isn't. Eh, kind of. Yeah, no, no, never mind, never mind. So, when are they coming after us? Is it a 35 day focus? More? Not gonna go harder than these 120 divisions because uh, I do not want to create generic generals. I hate that so much. Oh, there we are. The Second War, uh, war of Winkelried. Well, why are you using a German word for something that doesn't involve the Germans? A war started in the east, and old enemies from centuries once again found themselves jumping to each other's throats. A broad coalition of nations from former Russian Empire territories turned against their old lords of Moscow, striving to finally put an end to this Muscovite monstrosity and liberate Russians and other ethnicities from the old chains. Bruh. On the other side, Russians wished to finally end this petty rebellion that was so annoying uh, for them for so many years and move and move their armies against the armies of Intermarium, Thunder, Romes in the east indeed. Men and women with all of their passions start to kill each other in the name of their homelands, and piles of bodies rise to the captive heaven to the very throne of God. A conflict was started, and the end of it is nowhere to be seen. Vinker leads, and messiahs of both sides will die and kill for a long time before the last drop of blood of the precious human blood. For the last drop of the precious human blood will be spilled on the dirty rocks, and a new victor will create a new order in the east will emerge. Zemsa, Zemsa, na vroga. Is that Polish? Alright, five countries. That's your problem. Oh yeah, I don't yeah, you don't have any uh, guns on you, that's unfortunate. Alright, well they're very weak here. Yeah, and we're not fighting the Belarusians. Fantastic. We need to justify war goal on you? Probably do. Forty days, fantastic. Well, they don't appear to have put troops on their northern borders. I know where the Polish and Lithuanians are, but they'll be arriving shortly, no doubt. Quickly break across. It's going pretty damn well so far. Hopefully we can wrap up some of these battles before they, you know. Are you, are you doing anything? You don't look like you're, you're doing anything. Why is it lagging? Come on. There we are. That's better. Oh, no, never mind. You just won your battle so quickly that I thought you were doing nothing. Wow. Oh, you're doing the, the, the last stand. Oh, but you, you, you guys aren't. Fantastic. Hurry up, then. Get across, get across. No, no, you are doing last stand. Whack. Oh, we're across anyway. That's what I'm talking about. Cut them off. Oh, there's the poles. Quite well in Estonia. Not as well in Latvia. Poles were able to get there first, I suppose. Because it's closer geographically speaking. 
Also, yeah, repair everything, basically. Oof, that's a lot. Cancel all this, so... Sorry about that, I was quickly tabbed out of the SoundCloud. Oh, Stonia's gone. No. Oh. Pelon Infantry Expert? No, nope. Fortress Buster. Fantastic. Ah, yes. Techno believe that. No. Back to Zaris music. Rather over to Zaris music. Oh, the bloody fields of Ukraine. Okay, hold here. No point senselessly throwing our men into the meat grinder. Why are you still attacking? I told you to stop. Yeah, I was going to say did your front line start extending? It did, okay, that's fine. Oh, ah, sugar, they're doing that. Stop them. Wait, so... Yeah, why aren't you doing anything? Do something. I forgot to put the things in. I did. Oops. That's just help. Why are we researching everything so quickly? exactly like those odds. But yeah, but they don't have forts. Yeah, that's true. They don't have forts. Alright, now that's an issue again. So here's what we'll do. Lasevsky holds. Lev goes and deals with this. Controls for publics are going after Romania. I wish I could help, but I cannot. We've reconquered most of Estonia. Not for long, though. So, yeah, we'll cut these guys off. Polish as well. That's unfortunate. Except for one Ukrainian division, that is. Oof. 
rough. And the stone is gone again. Yeah, you down here. If you break across it, that'd be great. I love how stone faced Lev looks like uh, Lev looks in his portrait. Oh, easy dubs. Oh, bruh. Easy dubs if we actually get this. Oh, no, bruh. It's over, Lev. Oh, it's over. Oh, I don't have you uh, battle planning. Whoops. Over. Front is weak again. Good. Lithuania gone. Formation flying. Do that. Land doctrine. Oh, we actually can't get land doctrine. Never mind. Yep, it's Jover and Tamarian Bros. Rushes back. The mother city is ours. Please change it to the correct spelling and pronunciation. Can I do that? No. Expired. God damn it. Oh, they decrypted our cipher. Ooh, the Greco-Turkish War. National liberalism versus national rejuvenatism. Oh, but bruh, the bot they're becoming huge. How is Montenegro actually independent? That's crazy. 
Also, Germany just kept Austria, or Italy rather. Marcel Dayat, every timeline, baby. Every timeline. Oh, what? Didn't even know that was a thing. Nice, great flag, though. Oh my god, look at that flag. That is beautiful. I was gonna say, yeah, has, yeah, they've just, I don't know if they, if they invaded here, but, uh, like, look at Guido Killer, I swear to God, so many Italian politicians are just variations on Italo Balbo, like, Dino Grandi looks like if you squint at that Italo Balbo and try to draw him from memory, Guido Keller is just Balbo, but bigger facial hair, and hair, like, it's literally like Guido Keller and Dino Grandi are just like skins in a video game of Italo Balbo. Just like different skins. That's all that is. That's all they are. Aesthetically speaking. Why aren't you moving forward? Is it time for a new battle plan? There we go. Casualties. Not bad. They have more units than we do, but so I don't think we'll go for them. Don't feel exactly confident. We need this rail connection badly. Oh wow, Lavav is ours? Damn. Land Doctrine, Spur Support. Wow, none of, none of Latvia, Ukraine, Lithuania, Estonia, they don't even have any military formations in exile in Poland. So young in that portrait. What is that? What is going on here? There we are, supplies fixed. Good. out hard.
I was gonna say, yeah, because... Oh, is that the war? I think it is. Oh, never mind. Recently united, united, yeah, yeah, recently reunited United Russia has put down the Polish Eagle. Fall of the free city with recent failures of the intermarium in the war against the aggressor Prush. Uh, will not simply wait for the Poles to recover. This morning, Prussian units entered the free hands. Yet no, no, God, God, you couldn't even, you couldn't even get the fucking victory event right. God damn it. Now what can we do? Integrate Ukraine, 150 days. Integrate Lithuania, Belarus, Poland. Can't do Poland, why not? Because we're not Gorgolov, because we're not Gada. Or because we're not the Free Creatorium, because we're not Jelta Russia. Because we're not Mayakovsky. Oh. Okay, we can't do them for some reason. Okay, well, for those reasons. Integrate the conquered territories. But we can't reclaim Central Asia, so let's go do that now. Holy shit, they've done... Have they done more conquering? Or no. No, I don't think they have. Yeah, that's, uh... That's in Kiang. Or is it Jang? Over here. Over here. Now, we will organize Poland. That is a lot of stuff. Do that. 14 days. Wait, where, where'd Belarus go? I didn't conquer them. Where'd they go? Did we just annex them? In, by clicking some event? I think we might have. Because I, I didn't do it. That much I know. I didn't do it through one. I didn't do it through the uh, tool pack or anything like that. I think they were just given to us. Which is kind of kind of sad for Vitoska. How did... Okay, now what do we got? A new hope. Our crusade turned to its conclusion. What remains of the old Sanation regime stands shattered at the sign of our marching feet in, in, Warsaw, Minsk, in Warsaw, Minsk, and Kiev. The threat of Intermarium stands vanquished, but an age-old question remains. Uh, quo vadis, or rather, where should the Polish nation go from here? It will be a Poland of might and justice. It's a self-governing kingdom in a union with our glorious empire, as it always should have been. Pilsudski's lunatics might have tainted the vision of a truly national Poland through their Masonic machinations, but nothing is beyond repair. Soon, new Poland will rise from the ashes of what they had destroyed, stronger than ever before, but who shall lead it? On the forefront, Boleslav Piasecki is a young man with new ideas, a voice with many ho uh, which many hope will inspire a modern generation of Poles to take our side. Taking the teachings of a union of young Russia as his own, Piasecki's beliefs mix industrialism and radical nationalism. Though popular with the Polish exiles, many worry about his unconventional ideas, thinning the line between nationalism of Warsaw and that of Lassale. Of Lassale. Zygmunt... Uh, Chibakovsky leads the new guard of national democracy and his appointment would fulfill the promises we had made years prior uh, though his ideas are much more radical than that of the recently departed Roman Domovsky a radical republican opposed to the three don'ts of Spartacism, Semitism and, and uh, stone builderism uh, Chibakovsky takes his notes from various books in Europe where Dom uh, Domovsky's ex uh, expertise is lacking such as our Black Hundreds or the Romanian Iron Guard Finally, Stanislav Kaziki is the most orthodox choice, a uh, choice member of the old guard of National Democrats and one of the men who had lobbied for the formation, 
Domov Chizina, the agreement between Domovsky and Slipin, which would ensure the formation of a Polish autonomy within the Russian Empire. Such a decision was seen as blatant collaborationism then, however, and his appointment would likely not sit well with much of the general population. Nonetheless, he serves as the most reliable cog to our machine, being the most ac accommodating to whatever direction Russia pr uh, pursues, as long as Polish interests are not trampled along the way. Okay, so... So we would fulfill our agreements. Where was it? Yeah, promises we had made years prior. That's for these two. So Piasecki has the fire we desperately need. We have, yeah, Domovsky, King of Poland, despotism, reactionism, polyarchy. Yeah. Domovsky, Zina. I think we go for Kibikovsky. There we are. King of Poland. And then we give Lithuania. Very generous, aren't we? Let's whip out the two back. Give them some more territory. Obviously, we're not going to be hanging on to these territories. Is that is? I do believe it is. Yeah. It's still a nice Poland, considering we conquered them, they didn't actually lose any territory. In fact, they gained Lithuania, so... We are eternally merciful. Kind of wish they'd knocked out, uh, you know... Prussia. It makes no sense why they didn't. That was a hell of a flag. Damn. That's the Bulgarian guy, yeah. AYR Thracia. Ooh, the entire Republic is here as well. By Carlo Rosselli. They're all in the rough front now. Damn. Anyway, get to Turkestan. Are we there? Not yet. That's fine. Supply is horrible, as expected. Expect nothing less out of Central Asia. That's crazy that we didn't, we didn't have any focuses for so so long, but then we actually ended up having a an event for reorganizing Poland. I'm very surprised at that. Recon and our engineers, fantastic. Let me uh, let me see those uh, shock troops. What do they actually do? Let's if we were to kiss here out this division with shock troops instead of you know infantry. Are they actually a specialized unit that does something specific, or are they just like better infantry? Let's see. Okay, initiative goes up 180 percent. That's insane. Breakthrough goes up 1.8. Defense goes down 37.8. Heart attack goes up 0.6. Soft attack goes down four. HP goes up 45, recovery goes up 0.12, suppression goes up 4.5, supply use goes up, average reliability goes down, they need 85 support equipment each, infantry equipment requirements goes up for some reason, and training time, is that, that's not, yeah, how about this, is this, can't tell if this is getting changed, yeah. I think I'll just stick with what we have. Now, reclaim Central Asia. 14 days. So Greece is actually still alive in Turkey. That's crazy. Greece lives. And Greece. And Cyprus. You're going to be incredibly powerful. Also, let's see, uh, there, there's Kabovsky. Does he have a description? No, nope. fair enough. Is this... I'm going to assume this is all stuff that you already had, that you didn't get all of these now. 437 factories, fantastic, though. We don't really have many, mil uh, many civilian factories. We have a ton of military factories, though. Yeah, wow. 
There we are. Let's go. No one will give us rubber. That is an issue. Jensarovi. Organization first. Why aren't you just going forward? That's how that works. That's how war works. You march forward, you take territory. In the name of God. How many men do they have? Not many. It's hard to move Turkish then. That's cute. Look at that half Cossack, half anarchist flag. This is our Anakov's almighty host. Plus 0.65 daily political power game. If you, had, if you had anything to spend that on, that would be valuable. Also, speaking of our political power, yeah, let's get Putilov. Let's get... Ooh, Degtorov. Let's get McCoy and Gurevich. We'll get... Baltiski Verfi. And ooh. And you are Vagan Zavad. Or you are Vagan Zavad. Uh, how are we producing trucks when we have no rubber? Just get whatever rubber we can, even if it's at extremely unfavorable exchange. Our exchanges. the Air Force. PBS 43. God, I wish they'd change the icons. Very... That's all she wrote for Anankov. Also, just give me Sakala. Yeah, you're losing anyway. To China, so just give me. Do you have Kuril separate as well? That's what I'm talking about. Change the name, though. Annoying. That is a nice Russian Empire. Now, just come over here. Fall back line. Wait, wait, what? Oh, damn, another unique event. Or at least something unique. Install Sheng Shikai in Xinjiang. Sheng Shikai has proven open to collaborate with us, given his past experience in ruling the region and the efforts required to maintain our direct control over the area, restoring his clique in exchange for his loyalty would pr uh, to, uh, in exchange for his loyalty to us would prove itself a wise move. Damn. Why are we, are we getting this unique content but couldn't get a longer focus stream? Or do I do I want to do that? 
I don't think I do. I can't. No, I, I think I, I think I like Greater Russia more. Yeah, yeah, I like Greater Russian Asia more. I said, I'll do. I'll install it just so that you guys can see it. But then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to immediately annex him. Yeah, there he is. Civil War economy. No folk Australia, so. Yep. Oh, back to being annexed. lads that is the series i hope you enjoyed it uh, like it wasn't uh, a long series of course if i if there hadn't been that gap of about four days in between this episode and the previous episode it would have felt a lot shorter but you know because there was a gap it probably feels much longer than actually but i think it's only five episodes in uh in total oh, excuse me but i hope you enjoyed that yeah, now uh, in terms of the after action report uh speaking militarily we're we're doing very we're doing quite well at least in terms of uh the army the army is great it's modern it's large it's well equipped with heavy artillery modern infantry weapons we have quite a lot of trucks hopefully we can uh, fully motorize the army soon enough but we need to get working on the likes of anti-aircraft guns anti-tank weapons we need to get working on uh speaking in terms of the air force we need to get working on actual modern aircraft we do have aircraft but they're not modern they're not good we need to get working on that Speaking in terms of the Navy, we do not have one, so we need to get working on a Fire uh, Pacific Fleet, a Caspian Flotilla, a Black Sea Fleet, Baltic Fleet, a Northern Fleet. We need to get working on all of that. Uh, speaking again, uh, back to the Army, we need to get uh, tanks out. Tanks are very important. We need to get mechanized infantry out, so that's APCs. Uh, yeah, we'll be working on assault rifles later on, or it says it's a PPS-43, but later on, later on, we'll be working on assault rifles. Who knows, maybe we'll see the AS-44, or maybe the, an, an AS-46, some modernized variant of Sud uh, Sudiev's rifle, be the main assault rifle instead of Klaskov. Who knows where Klaskov is in this universe? Uh, geopolitically speaking, we are, yeah, locked in a cold war with the Rot Front. Who are, who is at war with the Entente? Oh, God, looks like, oh, no, 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 that's the Entente, that's a good thing, never mind. Um, they're locked in a cold war with the, uh, with the Entente and the Entente is basically all there is against the Rot Front there is no one else except maybe the Japanese if they got their act together but it doesn't look like, that, doesn't look like that's going to happen at all Yasuhito is stuck in Manchuria fighting Feng Tian yeah, led by Zhang Zulin and because America doesn't exist uh, maybe they'll get their act together in a couple of decades but other than that it's literally just us and the British and you know the British colonies against the Rot Front and the Rot Front are big the Rot Front is on is it would be on track for total world domination if it, if it wasn't for us yeah I mean they even they've even got Brazil for God's sakes why have they got Brazil but they do so yeah the, the French folded incredibly quickly um so yeah, Jubilee, yeah, but but like we could easily, or, or not easily, but we could absolutely resist an invasion by them. We have a hell of a lot of factories and millions upon millions of people. Uh, what else? That's military Jubilee. Socially speaking, all the Reds are gone. All the small hats are gone. Accelerationists gone. Futurists gone. Anyone who basically isn't a Black Hundred is gone. <laughs> this ultra nationalistic. Uh, we have a description. Oh my god. Finally. The misbegotten son of Zilta Russia has returned not to bring peace but carrying a sword. Konstantin Vladimirovich Rodzevsky was born in Blagovashensk on the Amur River to a reasonably middle class family with a notary uh, patriarch. Much of his childhood was spent in a country at war in a Russian far east that avoided direct invasion by the Germans, did not uh, escape the revolutionary turmoil that followed. The deprivations and mobilizations of his homeland may have had an impact on his eventual ideological evolution. In the final year of the civil conflict, he was drafted to the Siberian front line despite being a teenager, and for him, the story of the war was not one of heroic rear guard actions, but of retreat after demoralizing retreat. It is unclear uh, what the eventual inciting incident was, given the need to operate clandestinely, but Radzevsky was involved in propaganda and 
Arson activities for anti-Republican organizations by the mid-twenties. The young Constantine would escape arrest and a certain death sentence uh, through flight into the Russian Empire in 1927. While he was received pleasantly as a defector, it was far from a hero's welcome. And so Constantine followed his father's footsteps in legal studies before finding the knowledge to make sense of his youth. Mother Russia had long been poisoned from within by the internal enemy. Uh, and while the liberal small hat and red had been burned out of the core of the country, the cancer were still metastasized in the Far East. Almost scrawny in appearance, but throbbing with an obvious energy, Radzevsky was able to convince uh, local governors near the borders who support his project of creating a Black Hundreds organization to carry out activities against Harbin. Investments made in part to satisfy the impulsive radical soon paid dividends, the, his oratory and drive especially in smuggling and broadcasting propaganda into the Republic, saw his star rise. Now with the bastards of the South fighting amongst themselves, a private organization such as his crusade is perfectly suited to operate independently in the region while the Empire starts out its own domestic affairs or domestic matters. So begins the long-awaited campaign of vengeance. God with us. Beautiful. That is a, I'm very glad that they added it to the description in the hotfix. I'm, I'm very glad that I, t I panned, my, the, panned the curse over it as well because I wouldn't have known otherwise. Yeah, so I, I don't know if we're going to crown a czar. I would assume that we are, you know, because we're the Russian Empire. But we just knocked out the Russian Empire, who had a czar, Andre. And, and Russia hadn't had a czar in ages. And, you know, we killed that country. So maybe, maybe we'll take Andre and make him a puppet or something like that. Maybe we'll take someone new. Maybe we'll get someone the likes of Mikhail II. You can get him in Kaiser Redux as well. Uh, I don't know where Frankl is. Probably, yeah, czar. <laughs> czar Frankl, Prime Minister Rodzewski. Uh Vaz Rodzewski, yeah. I don't know who will crown, but I assume that we'll have to crown someone, or, or and if we don't do that, we'll just have to create some sort of Russian national state and just, you know, throw off the whole moniker of uh, empire, because we're very much not an empire, but the same thing with the Black Hundreds, like, we kind of have to be an empire, you know, there is no, you know, Republican Black Hundreds, you know, the Republican Black Hundreds is just the RFP, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, we've, we've been using so much, uh, so much Kodriano imagery, like, all hail the Capitan. Like, instead of the Vaj, I don't know why, because like the, we have been calling him the Vaj as well, but uh, we're also calling him the Capitan. I, I'm pretty sure uh, a country as the sun in the sky came up somewhere as well. Like, we had a Kodriana reunification quote. Yeah, every, yeah, Everything for the Country, that was the name of the Iron Guard's actual party. It was called the Everything for the Country Party. Uh, so, we should very much be crowning a Tsar. And we only have one and only one puppet, the Kingdom of Poland, blessed. Uh, I don't know what we're doing with the Finns, whether we're... I, I imagine we're crucifying them, which the Finns hated when uh, that began. They began the... Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but either way, the Finns were a pretty loyal minority in the Russian Empire before the Russians decided to, oh, you know, let's take a perfectly good thing and just flip it on its head and start crucifying them, you know? And I think that started under... I want to say Nikolai the Seg, or, or was it was it Alexander the Third? It might have been. Oh, PBS 43, there we are. Giving more steel Japan. Fantastic. I'm recording, aren't I? I? Swear to God, if I was still pause, I'd be very upset. More rubber. Oh, finally, people are trading with us again. Beautiful. There we are. Rubber trade fixed, boys. It's all good. Hundreds of trucks rolling off the production line every day. But uh, yeah, socially speaking, there's going to be a lot of purges, uh, pogroms elevated to state policy rather than just because like the thing with a pogrom is it's spontaneous. Like it's not actively organized from like the highest echelon of society, you know, the government. But yeah, I imagine we will um, just be going full shickle gruber on the uh, on the small hats uh, because like like we've got the black hundreds never ran the government. The black hundreds are now running the government. Maybe, maybe not full shickle gruber, but like just like organized pogroms. That's you know like, like why why would you stay in the Russian Empire? The, then again, the small hats were restricted were restricted to the uh, pale of settlement. So I imagine in without. Uh, Without a long, without a large amount of time passed, we, we will have very, very few small hats in the country because, you know, obvious reasons, you know, r removal. Oh, that was a decent flame. Never mind, I don't like it. Look, look, look. Yeah, yeah, this this looks much better. It almost looks like a, the Polish flag, but with the fasces on it, but the fasces didn't have an accent, so just a bundle of sticks. Yeah. Uh, economically speaking, we're going to have to tie together the various uh, dispersed economic... Uh, systems that we've conquered, like, you know, obviously in Harbin there was all kinds of economic systems. It, it's, it doesn't really say what our economic system is as far as I'm aware. I assume it's going to be some sort of corporatism. Yeah, and we've got, we've got some sort of Rodzevskyite, Stakhanovite movement as well, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, basic social benefits. I imagine some sort of corporatism. 
Yeah. So we'll have to tie all of that together then we conquered Vlasov. Vlasov, now, yeah, Vlasov won't, won't be as difficult to tie together because I imagine he was corporatist as well because he was solidarist, you know, right syndicalism, all of that. Anankov didn't have an economic system. Anankov, Anankov's economic system was raid people and steal stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll have to tie Drozdovsky's system as well. I'm not sure what his system is. I can't quite remember, to be honest. I, as, far as, as far as I'm aware, it's not corporatism. Probably just some sort of basic capitalism. Um, yeah, obviously we're going to... Yeah, Again, speaking socially, we'll have to tie together all of these... Uh, newly conquered ethnicities, uh, the Ukrainians, because don't uh, we've had left bank Ukraine for ages, so like that's fairly russified. But because right bank Ukraine has been independent for a while, for a good long while now, they've developed a uh, independent Ukrainian identity. Obviously, there were still Russians here, especially in places like Odessa. But we're going to have to russify all of this: russify the Belarusians, russify the Ukrainians, russify the Balts. Yeah, yeah, we let them keep Lithuania. That's fine. Let them have that. But uh, I have no doubt that the Russification will be ra ramped up to 110% in that eventually. Oh, look, the Czechs are here. Very nice. I never like when Germany annexes the Czechs. I always like when Germany annexes the Sudan line because it's like 90% German. But I just don't like Germany with the Czechs. Don't, don't get me wrong. In terms of borders, it looks great. But in terms of, you know, you know, ethnic, actual you know ethnic groups and running a state, it's not great. Those are some, some decent Germany borders, though. Yeah. Very decent, actually. Very nice. If only you have the, had these territories, but I'm not going to give those to you. Uh, yeah, if you have the Switzerland territories as well, that would look good too. That is a fine, greater public control as Germany. Or at least a fine, greater beard as the public control as Germany. Uh, oh, Entente's been beaten back in Ireland. But anyway, yeah, like, like everything, it's a fairly... I hesitate to call this a bright future. Because it's the Black Hundreds, you know how it is. Militarily speaking, it's a bright future. Economically speaking, it's a bright future. In terms of not being subjugated by other countries, it's a bright future. Uh, I mean, yeah, for, for the vast majority of the population, it's a bright future. Because, you know, the vast majority of the population aren't stone builders, small hats, reds, all of that. It's a cold war. See whose economic system is better. We've got some sort of Demsock Germany versus corporatist Russia. How corporatist it is, I can't really say. It's it's not Natsov corporatism from Tino or anything like that. Or it might not even be corporatism at all because it's the Black Hundreds. The Black Hundreds is just... I'm not sure how... The, the, uh, economically speaking, the Black Hundreds are like... We don't like what the Reds are doing, but in terms of that, we don't really have an economic platform. Who knows, we, we might even go back to feudalism or something like that, which would be absolutely horrible. But alright, lads, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed this series. For the next episode, we will be having a very, very special episode on Pax Britannica. And then we'll be heading into Pax Britannica for a series. And after the Pax Britannica series, we're going to bounce around a couple of mods. We're going to bounce off of uh, Leader Realm. I, I, I hate that I have to call it that, but hey, the, the FR mod has two big no-no words in it, and I am just not racing it. The Leader Realm mod will bounce off of Tino again, of course. We'll bounce off of Old Or Blues. Might bounce off of Gates of Versailles. Might check that out, see what's going on there. Might play Cam Before the Storm. Or no, 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 uh, no. Can't before the storm or the coming storm? I, can't, I think it's the coming storm, yeah. But I don't know if that's had an update since the, the game, uh, since the mod actually dropped and the content is very buggy. Uh, but either way, we'll branch out. Obviously have uh, a good amount of exploration in Pax Britannica. There is uh, two, two playthroughs in that coming soon. Um... I want to bounce off of uh, Leader Realm as well. There's there's three playthroughs we can do there. Uh, two main ones, though. Two, there's one that I want to do very soon, and two more that have been in my periphery for years at this stage. But, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye. Also, thank you for the fantastic uh, subscriber growth and views recently. I greatly appreciate it. And always, always remember to leave a comment. I live for that interaction. Whatever about views and, uh, and likes, it's the comments. Keep the comments coming. See you next time.